Um, I would like to go around and introduce ourselves just so we know who's here and know where we're all coming from. So I'm Denise Norris with South Charleston Public Library. I have next on the list, Amanda. Okay, it's really Leanne. Um, someone borrowed my laptop for a Zoom meeting and put their own name in and I don't know how to fix it. So it's Leanne <laughs> okay. in Ohio County. Okay. <laughs> It's okay. Friday. My brain's fried. I can't figure it out. <laughs> I understand. Boy, technology, right? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> okay, Alex is next up. Sorry, you might hear my printer cycling because I chose right. print. <laughs> um, That's fine. Alexandra Schneider um, with the Burke County Public Libraries. Okay, next up I see Toby. Well, um, I'm Toby from South Charleston, and this is, I'm going to back away so she can talk. This is Annette. <laughs> that's that's the, the other two pieces of our threesome, and our fourth person is our, our youth intern volunteer. So, okay, Dana, you're next. I'm Dana Phelps. I'm from Martinsburg, Berkeley County Public Libraries. Currently on quarantine, but I'll be back to work on Monday. Oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we, we were all, all exposed at Hedgesville Library and oh. uh, one of the ladies gets off of uh, her expo or her quarantine today and I have to wait till Monday. Lucky me. Wow. wow. It's a different world we're living in, that's for sure. So I did test so, negative, so there you good. go. Good. We like that. That's a good thing. So, so Lois, Lois or Lewis? Not getting a response there. Mary? No response there. You're, you have to unmute yourself. Lois and Mary don't have microphones. Okay, got it. Um, Suzette? Hi, I'm Suzette. I'm from uh, Craft Memorial Library in Bluefield. Okay, excellent. Kayla? Hi, I'm Kayla Gross from Mountsville, Marshall County. Wonderful. Eva? Hi, I'm Eva. I'm Eva McGuire, the director at Craft Library in Bluefield. Okay, excellent. Nikki? Excellent. Okay, she doesn't have a camera. She's um, Children's Services at Mary H. Weir Public Library. So yay. Thank you all for being here today. Um, the meeting format is quite different than when we usually all get together. So that's, that's a little bit of a challenge, but all good. So I think all of us are somewhat familiar with Zoom now. So I'm gonna to try to do a share my screen because um, I kind of like to go through a, a set covering of information. So what I will do is share my screen and hope that it works. Okay, can everybody see the presentation pages now? Yes. Can somebody verbally tell me? Because yes. I can't see the other screen. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yes. Good, 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 good. Okay, so this is our overview for the fall conference. As always, I remind everybody we want to share ideas, ask questions, learn from each other, and of course, have fun. Uh, one of the two primary goals I see for our roundtables is collaboration and communication. Um, and it is an open forum. So, and again, I can't see the screen right now with this rolling. So please let me know if you have questions. Um, as everybody knows, COVID happened. So there was no spring fling, unfortunately, 2020. Um, Alex and I had a wonderful breadth of information lined up and ready to go. And then was like, okay, never mind. So that there's a lot of that information that Alex has kept on file that we'll be able to call on people later on. Do you want to say anything about that, Alex? No, I think it went pretty well. Um, I enjoyed doing it through Google Drive. I think that helped you and I connect a lot easier and doing all of the updates. Um, yes. I think as long as you stay organized, it really spring fling can come together um, especially because everybody was doing amazing with submitting programs and um, everything so yeah no I was pretty you know excited for what we had but I was kind of glad that fall conference was able to use some of our our presenters for there sure. so we didn't do anything for nothing I think we definitely learned a few things while we were doing it 
Absolutely, absolutely. Because the spring fling is a primary, and we're going to talk through responsibilities um, of the chairs and the different positions within the roundtable. Um, as we know for this fall conference, new conference format and the opportunity to e-collaborate. Um, I think a lot of us have talked about the fact that Zoom can be you know, frustrating at times, but how wonderful it is to get to see everyone's faces and, and communicate and connect that way. There's been some weekly meetings of different groups via Zoom. So I think that's always a helpful part of what we do with the, the electronic stuff. So um, what we've done, um, I want to go through a quick overview of what we did last fall. So everyone is up to speed with how we've organized the round table. So folks have a clearer understanding of how we function. Um, we established a leadership model and have been doing member surveys. So it goes out to everyone on the WVLA listserv so that folks have an opportunity to pitch in and contribute. Um, whereas before, I think it was more people who were at that specific meeting at that time at the conference. So I think we're getting a wider um, distribution of opinions as far as what we want to do with the round table. So for the Spring Fling 2019, um, we sent out a survey asking about the leadership and the suggestion was that in order to be in compliance with WVLA, um, we needed to have a chair and a chair elect. So we decided that we would have a chair elect, a chair, and a, the addition of a past chair. So that way there would be a three-year commitment, but it would give some continuity of, okay, I survived planning the, the spring fling, so now I can help the new chair. And then the chair elect can come behind and shadow and learn what he or she would be responsible for the next year. So surprisingly enough, we had 36 responses to our survey, which I was very happy about, um, and 100% of them said they supported it. So um, what happened with effective that 2019, the, the membership decided we'd do the past chair chair and chair elect. Um, so basically, like I said, the past chair supports the new chair, the chair leads, and the chair elect shadows, so there's some understanding moving forward. Primary responsibilities of the chair of the Reuse Services Roundtable is to co-plan the spring fling with the chair of the Public Libraries Division. And this year, last year it was Alex, and Alex and I worked on spring fling that didn't happen. <laughs> and then um, this coming year, Mary Hooper is over the um, Public Libraries Division, and she would be working with the chair of the Youth Services Roundtable. So we'll, we'll cover this in just a second here. So the, basically the chair convenes the roundtable at spring and fall conferences. So this meeting and the one that's held in the spring, you share an update in the fall and the spring after the conferences with WVLA's executive committee. And then you facilitate that spring election process who assumes the chair role in the following fall, okay? So uh, we did the survey in September of 19 for 2020's people. So I was chair. Again, that's why I helped Alex with the spring fling. And Deborah Hardesty was our, is our chair elect. So that means that Deborah will be moving into the chair's role this year. She and I had a long conversation. And at first, I think she was somewhat reticent to move forward because we are in such a fluid period of time with all the things that are happening. So we decided we would co-chair so I could help her through the process. Um, and then the next year we would have a chair elect that when we elect a chair elect, they will shadow her and I, and then we'll start into that three people progression from that point. So the revised plan right now is in the next week or so, I'll be sending out an online ballot to elect the chair elect, the person who would be planning the spring fling in 2021, 22, 22. Um, and they will shadow for this coming spring fling. So the online ballot and survey will go out um, in September of next year, and all we will be electing is just our chair elect, and that'll be the routine. Every September, someone will be selected, and then that person will rotate into the role. Does anybody have any questions at this point? I can't see everybody, so I'm like, hmm. Okay, Zoom, Zoom. Is everybody still there? Everything making sense? Can I get some thumbs up, head shakes? Yes, okay, everything good? Okay. Um, just wanna make sure I'm checking in. So let me go back over here. Oops, went back too far. So I thought what we could do is talk a little bit because the biggest thing we talk about with our committee is the fact that we're collaborating. 
Um, I'm just going to leave it like this so I can still sort of see you guys. Um, so we share sharing of our experiences during this COVID process. And so how have things changed for everyone? How has anyone's experience been with online programs? Has anybody been doing online programs? Yes. Okay. So I heard you talking a little before the meeting started about uh -huh. um, burnout from the kids and how everybody, uh, well, additionally, what we've noticed is that the parents are vying for time for the computers. Um, yes. Broadband is great in our area, but if you've got big brother um, on the computer in the morning, you also can't have preschool story hour in the morning. Sure. Um, so we've had some problems with that. So what we have done instead is do surprise book story times or mystery story times where we've presented um, the entire story time uh, scenario. We've given the, the parents a piece of paper with explicit instructions on how to do the story time, uh, mm -hmm. including a, um, a craft, which is just, we took pictures of ourselves doing the craft so that, you know, how those parents don't know how to glue the eyeballs on in the correct position. That way they can see what it's supposed to look like, including okay. a song or something like that. So that's what we've done. Um, but okay. yeah, it has completely changed stuff. Yes, absolutely. Have other folks been doing things kind of out of the box? We decided to do a virtual Halloween party. Oh, yay. Okay. So we're having kids sign up for a box that has a copy of There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Bat and has two crafts and some candy and all that kind of stuff. And we're okay. going to do a drive through pickup. Well, they can either get a curbside or when they stop in, or they can do the drive through pickup. And then we're just going to do a virtual story time where the kids will have a copy of the book and I'll read it. We'll make the crafts together and fun. Okay. Do what you can do. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what we're all figuring with. That's why I love sharing ideas that everybody's doing. So um, Nikki says in the chat that she's getting a pretty good response. I do a virtual story time intro with my elephant Benny and our story time song, read the story, do a craft based on the story theme and closing. I make a video and release it on our Facebook page and on my personal YouTube page. I also have a craft to go kit that goes with the craft. I've had 30 to 33 take them each week. We've been making 35. I have anywhere from 30 to 70 views on YouTube. Excellent. Very, very good. Good stuff. Okay. Other ideas, things people have done. Okay. This is Beth. Hey, Beth. We've been creating and distributing kits. We started in April and are still going strong. We're ready to start doing videos. Good, okay. Anybody else want to pop, pop something in the chat or pop into the conversation? We've just been doing a lot of online stuff. Um, Eva just did our um, Halloween cooking demonstration kind of that we're putting on today. And she, I mean, it's like lots of really cool stuff you could do. And okay. we had cooking all through the summer because we normally do a cooking class. So, so we had one a week okay. along with our regular story hours and stuff. Okay. And so did you release that on Facebook or live? We did Facebook. We've actually um, been sticking to Simon and Schuster and Macmillan. So we don't mm -hmm. have to worry about the permissions. Mm -hmm. um, we're just getting a lot harder with Thanksgiving coming up to find yes. an appropriate <laughs> book. that's still a Simon and Schuster and Macmillan, but yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Other creative things folks have done. We have two things. Um, we were able to get our story walk off the ground uh, this month. So we did do that. Um, it is a quote unquote pop up because we don't plan on having it monthly at this time. We just don't have enough resources um, sure. or energy to do it that monthly. But um, we are going to start with three times a year. And then if we can grow from there, just start small. Um, we had a kickoff party for that. So that was literally the first hit event on premise that we had in since March. Um, but we just had it outside. It's in our front yard. So you can kind of walk around. Um, and I know it sounds really silly, but if you are looking 
to just laugh. Um, the last Tuesday of every month at noon on our Facebook page, um, my right hand and I, Kim and I, um, are cookbook, cook by the book recipe club. So we have a cook by the book recipe club that traditionally there was a theme. You guys all met, we brought our recipes. We all got to taste everything. We discussed how we made it, what we did different. Um, it was a different take on a cooking class because we used to have the traditional cooking classes, but the woman who did them passed away um, very prematurely early in her life. So we were kind of looking for something different to kind of not trample on that too quickly. Um, and it's been very well, but we moved online Facebook. So literally Kim and I are now cooking. The whole time we were closed in quarantine, you were watching me in my kitchen cook and then now we're cooking in our kitchen in the back it's her and I doing our recipes and um we've gotten better uh we have like we feel like we're like you know real fancy because we have the clip-on mics so that you can hear us better through our masks now um so it's taken us a few times to get it but if you just maybe lunchtime or just want to listen to us as you're doing it it's less than a half hour and we just sit there and talk about um things the theme this month, um, we chose the Walking Dead cookbook um, from, the, from the TV movie series stuff. Um, and so we each chose a recipe out of that. And that's what we're going to be making. Um, so we're trying to now kind of go back to our collection so that we can kind of transfer it over and be like, if you like this, you can come in. And the Walking Dead cookbook is actually pretty interesting. So um, yeah, that's what we're doing. We've, we're trying whatever we can try to make sense of things. Yep, absolutely. I see Kayla has posted, we've been doing virtual story times that we we're doing great back in March and April, but the numbers of those have gone way down. I'm trying to come up with activities that don't require computer use. Yeah, and it's it really is a challenge because we know for a lot of our families, they don't necessarily have internet access or the devices to access. I mean, I know a lot of them have the school um, access that they're using from their school, but some of those are locked down to where you can't get to some parts of library services. So that presents another challenge. So um, we did a lot of the online Zoom stuff during the summer and we're still doing it one night a week, um, doing an event, a family fun fest. Um, and we decided to do something, I was telling Alex about this in the beginning, for fire safety week, we normally have partnered with our fire department and the firemen would come over and be dressed in their uniform so the kids could see them and would understand, you know, if they came into a building and looked like that, it wasn't a monster, it was a fireman coming to help you. Um, so we decided to uh, pair up and contacted the uh, chief of our fire department and chief of our police department and both groups participated with us and we spread word all through the valley and um, we actually got some really good media from it which made me very happy chief got interviewed on the news and told everybody about it so we actually ended up that night um, the fire department had trucks out in front of the uh, the fire station which is right across from the fire the library which makes very convenient um, and they were out in their full uniforms and then dressed regularly um, and were handing out packets and hats to kids and we passed out a fire safety packet that had Sparky the fire dog in it and um, we had a craft that we put in that could make their S SCPL fire hat and all we put crayons and that kind of stuff in there we were very fortunate we ended up having about 30 cars we estimate about 137 people came through so we were really really happy with the way that came together so we're trying to think about doing some stuff we're not sure because it's not looking real positive for Santa Fest which is our huge community event we do and it was scheduled for December 5th and we're just not sure we're going to be able to do a parade at that point the way things are looking right now so we're thinking about things we can try that might work <laughs> so it's all that throwing the spaghetti against the wall and seeing if it sticks so okay so let me see here I've got Stacy from Cabell says we've been doing so many virtual stories, cooking, flannel Fridays, crafts, etc. We recently started doing a very limited in-house story time on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month. The parents and the kids have been whoop, so happy coming back in. 
We've been doing special week-long programs that have been a huge success. We do both virtual and handing hundreds of kits out our drive through window. We've hooked up with other agencies and, and they, they're helping financially. We just started a story walk throughout downtown Huntington with 16 of our locally owned businesses. So far, it's gotten a great response and it will be up until the end of November. Wonderful. Oh, I know, Beth, I'm so sad. I, I don't know for sure that Santa Fest isn't gonna happen, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. So we're, we're starting to come up with the other 25 letters of the alphabet plan, B, C, D, E, and F. You know, you just gotta come up with something at some point. So, well, it's exciting to hear and share ideas that everyone's having. And that's the primary goal when we get together for these is to kind of brainstorm and see. Um, has anybody tried the socially distance where you are actually in the building? And if so, has that been successful? How, how have you kept them apart from each other? Because we all know the five-year-olds who like to lick things and, you know, all the fun that comes with the babies. So how have you guys creatively been able to do some stuff in-house? This, at the end of our summer reading program, um, for our tweens and our teens that participated, we did an outdoor um, tie-dye party. We separated the tables by six feet. We had two to three kids at, you know, if it was a six foot, eight foot table, there was three kids. If it was a round table, there was two kids at the tables. They wore their masks and they got to make, they got to make tie-dyed t-shirts that the library provided. Um, we provided pizza and drinks and, um, we had some door prizes and the kids of the kids really, really seemed to enjoy that. So we were going to do some other, we were going to do some movies out in the parking lot, but I don't know if it was, we tried an adult program, um, yeah. which is typically our hard sell. Um, our kids and our tweens and our teens is our, our big pull, but we tried to do mama Mia out in the parking lot and yeah. nobody showed up for it Aww, um, so it it was one of those okay we'll just not put a whole lot of time into stuff like that again sure. um, but we had talked about doing like a Halloween dance in the parking lot for the tweens and the teens um, and trying mm -hmm. to do something for the for the children um, but I don't know if that's gonna if we're gonna be able to take that off i i am so envious of libraries that can plan things like six months in advance and three months in advance i i'm lucky to get three weeks in advance mm -hmm. yep i understand well and the hardest thing is as we found like with summer reading you know in january we came back we had everything ready to rock and roll for summer reading and then covid so it's like throw all that stuff to the side and let's re go. And now I think my 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 code word for all that we're doing now I call it pandemic style. I think about the old Will Smith song, do it Will, big Willie style. We do it big pandemic style now, you know. So we just got to be creative and and see what sticks because it it changes so quickly. So and again we may get different. You know the schools. Some of them you're in red. Some of you're in yellow. It depends on which map you're looking at. So it's it's been tough so very 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 challenging so um our youth adult director this is mary um sherry houston has provided so many different grab and go kits about a hundred a week wow since june she's had a different theme for the season that's really cool that many adults would pick stuff up to take so very very good ideas very good so okay um let's see Stacy, I put hula hoops on the floor for the children to sit inside during story time, and so far that has worked. Hmm. Luckily, we have enough room that we can spread the kids out at different tables. Very cool. That's great that you've got that kind of space. I mean, that's one of the challenges I know we face at our library is we just don't have a space that's large enough to accommodate the turnout that we get and keep them six feet apart. So, and I think everybody's dealing with that because we have smaller libraries all through the state. So indoors is kind of the, the nope right now for our library. We've decided we're not doing any in-house because we can only have 25 people in the building at one time. So 
that really limits. And even with kids coming in after school, we aren't able to do that right now because we would have groups of 30 to 50 kids some days. So once they would come in, we'd have to stop them at this. And then when one went out one could come in, it just, so we made sure we blanketed the whole area before school even started and said, we hate that this is this way, but for now, alternate arrangements need to be made. Um, and our community has been very supportive. We've had a few teens pop by who, whose parents weren't aware and we just worked with them, let them come in and call their parents and wait till their parents came to pick them up. So um, it's hard. It's really, really hard. You know, and Beth's saying she can only have three in the building. And again, it's so restrictive. So, so I applaud all of you because this is great stuff everybody's coming up with. It's like, okay, well, let's try this and try that. And, and that's how we're getting good stuff happening. I love to hear all the creativity. So we talked a little bit about the take and make, and that sounds like it's going well. So what other types of things may have changed for your library that's dramatically different in the way you're working with you? So I'm sure uh -oh. everybody ask. <laughs> I'm sure everybody has um, has taken all their toys out of the library. And so that's been a big thing for us because we always had a lot of kids there either doing our puppet theater or our Lego table. Uh, yes. It's been very frustrating. So what we've come up with uh, and we're able to social distance well with it. We're only allowed to have nine people in our small Hedgesville branch. So yes. what, we, what we've done is we've um, come up with scavenger hunts across the entirety of the library, not just in the children's section, also in the adult section. So that like in groups of a family group, the kids can go find Where's Waldo in strange places around the library. Um, and then we give them something, you know, a pencil, something uh, when they complete it. This last one we did was more of a reading uh, thing. They had to, uh, it was a Halloween. They ended up having to come up to the CERC desk and say, happy fall. And then we give them a little treat. So that's, how we have changed things with the library uh, lack no toys yes yeah we get a lot that came in right after the building we were actually able to reopen the building in mid-june and people are like where's the imagination station and the toys and the puzzles and the i mean because we had tons of that stuff and people were like well can you bring me one out to do it? it's like right now we're encouraging folks to come in get what you need and leave we've got a drive-through service and our drive drive up window has been remarkably busy. So our circus is picking up a little bit every week. Um, but again, those, those families come in and they're, cause we don't have any chairs out in the whole library except at our computers because we, we just can't have people sitting and staying for hours. Cause that of course increases risk of contagion. So again, we're all just trying to figure out, are we doing the right thing? And the, <laughs> it's hard to know. So Mary's saying six, she can have six at the main and five at her two branches. And then Nikki's saying that you're still not open to any building then. So <laughs> Alex, <laughs> anybody else's office taken over by their toys? Just mine. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> we were fortunate. We, we can't use our auditorium. So all of the toys and the furniture is in our auditoriums right now. So our, like toys, are, our toys are all in our building out back. So yeah. Yep. <laughs> It's tough. I mean, this is a whole different world that we're living in. So, so again, just kudos to everybody for the creativity. Um, I do want to share with everyone. We always, um, and I will send this out as an email attachment later um, and ask that it be sent with the recording. But just reminding folks, if you need to reach out to people who some of the points of contacts are across the state. Um, with, huh? Kate is no longer, Kate retired. Kelly has yeah. her position now. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. That's fixed. Okay. Excellent. So Kelly's your point of contact there. So <clears throat> then under um, Thousand Books Before Kindergarten, the information for their website. How many folks are doing Thousand Books? Are there... Alex, you guys are doing it? I know we're doing it. Yeah, I think we started it back in 2007 maybe okay we've been doing it for a while and um somehow covid struck again um we came back and we couldn't find our uh thousand books registration binder mm -hmm. who knows where that went 
Um, so we kind of had to recreate who we knew was active, but yeah, that was fun times. But yeah, we're doing it um, and it's more self-paced. We don't have any type of events for it, but we're hoping once this dies down, we wanted to start doing like a yearly party or a six month party to celebrate the people that finished and just yeah. have everybody come together to kind of keep them going. That's what we were doing before the pandemic. So yeah, doing a congratulations and, and welcome at the same time twice a year. So yeah, just to keep them recognized. And it's hilarious because when they complete, we usually take photos and the kids are so funny. We parade them through the library singing and clapping and everybody hollering for them and get pictures of them and post them on Facebook. And I mean, the kids have a blast with it. I, I just love to see that enthusiasm for reading that it really pushes with the littles. So um, one of the things that um, we're trying to think of some way to um, go to an online system to do our uh, thousand books because there is not an online type thing. So what we're contemplating, we found um, over the past summer, I don't know how many of you guys used Read Squared? Did a bunch of folks use it? So, okay. Well, we launched way before the state went into that process um, of doing uh, Read Squared. So we went with book points, but we're exploring book, uh, sorry, Read Squared now and thinking about some way that we may be able to use that to manage thousand books before kindergarten. And if that works out, it might be interesting that we can all pair together and use the same database. So if we were doing it that way, because we have so many people who transition, they may live in Charleston and then they move to Huntington and then they move to, so if it was maybe some way we could do a statewide kind of thing that, that would be where they could record their books and keep track. And so, okay, it says, Nikki says they have, okay, okay, cool. You guys are already doing that. So good, okay. So we just, I, I just wanted to throw that out there about is there a way we could do it to put it into one, shared database or how would we be able to pass people so that's another discussion that we can have in a bit and, and try to figure out some way to manage it because it would be awesome if they just knew go to a west virginia library and show them what you've got and you and put your books on your tablet or whatever it is or your paper copies whatever it, it may be and each library will respond to the fact that you read 500 in south charleston and 100 in huntington and so but it would all be collated so okay so just a thought, just a thought, because it is, it is really a great program and very easy to manage once you get it going. Um, the Imagination Library, how's everybody doing out there since it's now statewide? Going pretty well? People getting signed up in your counties? I was surprised. Um, the last time I looked, um, I thought I had those numbers laying here and I don't. Uh, let's see. Uh, don't know what the overall numbers were. I haven't looked in a while, but the last I looked, our numbers just in Kanawha County, we have 1,775 um, in just Kanawha County. So it's growing all around the state. So, and um, if you're not familiar with it or haven't started working with folks, you'll have in this slide, um, Brandy's contact information because make outreach to her and work with her to see about getting your local funding partners because they are wonderful to work with. So does anybody have any thoughts or comments about Imagination Library? Pros, cons, yes, no's? I like that they send out that email, the one you're talking about where they tell you what your proposed children are and what your um, registration mm -hmm. number is. So I definitely like getting that because mm -hmm. We started it with the local Elks group. The Elks actually put the money up front, but we were one of the people that really um, pushed the registration for people signing up. And mm -hmm. we filled the slots pretty easily with what we could afford, but then the right. local RN threw money in the boat um, and they were able to open up to all of Brook County because it was only Good. a zip code in Brook County. Um, so now our Good. whole county's covered and I'm kind of waiting to see what financial stuff happens over the next few months because we did put a line item to put some money ourselves into it. Even though we're a partner, we kind of wanted to also throw, you know, put our money where our mouths were and kind of help the sure. kids if you need to. So, but I do like getting that because it gives everybody by county and you can kind of see where everything is. By zip um, code and. Yeah. Yep. 
and their communication is uh, my contact. I don't know if it's the same contact with everybody, but my contact is super, super informative. Um, we had a we have a weird issue with Brook County. A little bit of the county goes up into the city of Weirton, which most of Weirton is in Hancock County. So the one zip code, while it's showing up Weirton, is actually for county address as well. So their system wasn't allowing for that. And she was like, oh, thanks for letting us know. Our system doesn't tell the difference. We were able to go in and finagle it so that now if a person puts their zip code and it's a weird one, but they put the county as Brook, then they're understanding, okay, that's one of the thingies. So they were yes, able to yes. fix their system and make it, you know, cope yeah. with everybody. Yeah, the Harless Center's doing a great job with managing it through the state and helping keep that kind of stuff organized. So, and like I said, I'll, I'll share this out with everybody so you've got Brandy's contact information. So, I do know that there is coming up um, a premiere of the Dolly Parton documentary about the Imagination Library. And I think they're still working on the announcements of the dates and that kind of thing. So, it'll be a virtual event. So I'd encourage you to keep an eye on the Facebook page for Dolly Parton Imagination Library and make sure you're sharing it through your social media because it's just an online watch party. But I've heard this documentary is really amazing. So just something to keep your eye out for on their website or on their Facebook page. So the next thing down was the Healthy Grand Families program. So they are still partnering with folks throughout the state. So if there's any information you need, send an email to Bonnie and see what kind of response. I know that their delivery systems may have changed tr dramatically as well because of our changes with the pandemic. So, of course, always the American Library Association and the subgroups that are part of ALA, which is the Association of Library Services to Children, and then YALSA, which is the Young Adult Library Services. Um, I had mentioned earlier a little bit, but the Library Commission and the Read Squared program that they provided this summer, um, seem to help tremendously because of our pandemic situation. So that is still available to folks. If you don't have access and you would like to, give um, Lisa a call or an email and let her know and she can get you connected with how you get started, okay? Anybody have questions so far on that? Thoughts, ideas, protests? If I see picket signs going up, I'm crying, I'm just telling you. <laughs> okay. The next slide here, the next theme for next year, which I'm sure most people already know, is the Summer 21 theme is Tales and Tales. And boy, that's going to be a fun one. I think everybody's pretty excited about what that's going to look like because there's some real opportunity with all the animals that have tails. So, and then there's the collaborative, there's the website for the CSLP Reads program. And there's access to the online manuals. All you have to do is contact Lisa and she gives you the codes to get into the manuals. So what other um, partnerships have folks done and done for programming? And <clears throat> I know, Alex, you were saying your Elks so sponsored some of your thousand books, right? Our friends sponsors a thousand books. Our Elks sponsors our summer reading, but the Elks whole National Foundation's grant thing was pushed back because of COVID. So they technically weren't able to sponsor this year, but we still oh. put their name up there because they work with us so much so sure. um, and then i think it was the dep or something west virginia dep or something like that um we somehow got in contact with them and they gave us uh, garbage bags and gloves for um world day what's world day uh -huh. birthday Our Our birthday birthday yeah and um we were able to give those out as packs with them and they just mailed it to us so i mean anything that pops in my thing and it's like sign up for free stuff i'm like Exactly. <laughs> Don't have to tell us twice. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Says, um, okay, let's see here. Um, Beth says, we are already thinking about holding animal adoption fairs. Um, yeah, and that's something um, that we've done three or four times. Annette, do you remember if we've done it three or four? I can't remember. I want to say at least three. Um, yeah, okay, three. So, um, but what we did is had our local cat shelter come in and bring cats and the kids read to the cats, but the cats were also up for adoption. And I think we had adoptions at all the events that we had. So it was pretty, pretty neat. 
So it's hard though, again, because unless you can do it outdoors right now, that's the big challenge. So um, let's see. Beth says she already does a kitty adoption fair in the past. So she's looking at doing another one and maybe a dog adoption fair. Okay, cool. I forgot to say that we have, we did have an in-person event. Our reed dog, uh, we have a partner with a, a lady that has a, a certified reed dog and oh, she wow. did come and have an outdoor program. She's had two outdoor programs, fairly successful, maybe five families, all masked and socially distanced, but uh -huh. I don't know that we'll be able to carry that into the um, indoor uh, season. So. Sure. Yeah, winter's coming, unfortunately, and it's going to make it hard to do that stuff. So unless we have ski instructors come in, that might be an option. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> We're all so creative. You know, just don't tell us no. We'll, we'll find a way, right? So other ideas or things that folks are doing that's creative and different and unusual and has been really successful or even something that wasn't successful that maybe you want to share. So somebody else may rethink some of the elements of it before you try it. No one? Okay, okay, good. Um, so let's see here. Um, the Train the Trainer program. Lisa and I both went and were trained for through YALSA, which is the Young Adult Library Services Association. And that group met and we did tons of hands-on training to do Train the Trainer events. Um, and then of course, boom, COVID, you know, that's kind of the, the word now. Um, but so we were planning to do things in the spring and the summer, which of course, all the training and things we've had have been for face-to-face -face facilitations. So the work over the course of the spring and the summer has been nationwide of everyone coming up with online programs and how we can do things to share um, concepts and, and practice and things that we can do to benefit our, tr our team programming. Um, we actually had two sessions that were scheduled, or I'm sorry, one, two sessions during this fall conference. One was last Tuesday and one is this upcoming Tuesday. And we were really excited because we had 40 people sign up. So we were really happy. So we ended up having to split it into two separate groups. And Lisa took one group and I took the other. Um, I have a recording of my session. If anybody's interested, I'll be happy to share it with you. And it kind of walks through the different programs and, and how you do the online components. And then I will, of course, record the second half this coming Tuesday. So if anybody wants to do that as a virtual experience, it, it's kind of interesting to hear the concepts and go through some of the activities. So just a thought. But Lisa, at our uh, are planning some additional upcoming sessions that will be like an afternoons program that will go through both connected learning, which is what we're doing right now in the class. And then the second half of it would be computational thinking, which is the other big component of the program. Um, one of the things that I, my takeaway from this program has really been is that most of us are already doing these implementing these concepts. We may not be calling it connected learning or computational thinking, but we're doing it in what we do every day. So it's really interesting to sit in on the sessions and think about the concepts and be like, we're already doing it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, but I think everybody picks up new concepts and new information as you go. So, um, you know, that can, can benefit everybody. You know, you just take what works for your library and how that works. Okay, so let's see what's next. Um, let me look at something here. Um, hang on. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right, so the next one <clears throat> here we have is collaboration. I'm going to be sending out a survey soon. Um, first thing I'm going to send out is some information about who would be willing to serve as our next chair elect. So that's coming out very shortly. Um, I remind everybody about our social media. We have our um, Storytime Underground West Virginia and we also have the, and that's one of the groups I facilitate. And then the other is West Virginia Library Summer Reading Supporters, and that you can contact Lisa Hachesky and she can get you involved in that. So I kind of included this from last fall. It's kind of a carryover, but I'm putting question marks everywhere because that's the way life is right now. As I understand it, the 
physical location has been pushed forward, meaning it would be at South Charleston again if we do it in the spring. So it would be sometime in April or virtually. So not really sure that's one of those to be announced type of things. So um, if anybody wants to now, my big question is always, <clears throat> what else would you like to see the round table do or what activity, what, what type of things would you like to see happen with the round table? Are you happy with the way it's going? Do you think there's other things we could be doing? And again, I'll ask that on the October survey as well, but any suggestions folks may have? Okay, I'm not seeing any chat or anybody responding. Okay, so the last slide I have is just the links to the Facebook page and the other, if you send a request to join um, for Storytime Underground at least, I usually get to it once every other day or so. So I'll make sure you get in there pretty quickly. And when I send this out, um, you'll have a link to the presentation that, that I put together for today, so. Um, let me go back here and see. Does anybody have any other announcements or things coming up or you'd like to share as we get ready to wrap up our youth services round table for fall of 2020? Denise, I think you're aware, but um, to let Deborah know too, and I let Mary know, if you guys do have your um, in-person spring fling and we get to do it, um, I still have all of the bags and the um, notepads for the goodie bags, registration bags. So Good. that's something that's already ready to rock and roll for you guys. Um, and I can still bring it down. I'm always there the day before. So I'd be happy to come down to help stuff, whatever, you know, for in person and everything. I'll make Great. sure it's on the calendar to get it down to you guys a little bit earlier. Much appreciated. Much I have appreciated. the banner to that okay. bonehead me forgot when I went to Morgantown. Uh, <laughs> but I have the bag sitting here tripping over it daily. So I will That's be good. glad to get it to someone to get it out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it, got it, got it. So yeah, and again, we'll just have to see. I, I don't know how soon the executive committee will make the call about April. So, you know, just trying to feel our way through what we need to do in January to start. Do we start lining up online sessions or face to face? And we'll kind of roll with it from there. So. So are you excited, Mary? She's not going to answer me, is she? She posted, Storytime Underground is wonderful. Thank you. Well, thanks. It's, it's a fun group. Everybody should be posting. You know, if you're a member in there, post and share ideas and sessions that you've been involved with or things you do want to share things from your page. So um, I think the hardest thing right now is we are kind of feeling that COVID fatigue of just oh my gosh, you know, doing this and doing that and doing this. And so um, it, it's, it's one of those things, don't be worried about borrowing things from each other, you know, using same, same ideas, same kind of things. We've actually been posting to our social media a lot of things that other libraries are doing or other organizations like going to NASA and, you know, kind of the big standbys, PBS Kids and the, all those types of things um, because again it's already great content it's right there just click forward and paste and I mean our patrons it's been surprising how much they enjoy those kind of forwarded posts so okay any other comments for the good of the order before we wrap up on time dun, 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 dun. I feel like I did an awful lot of talk and I hope I didn't feel you guys didn't feel like this was a talking head kind of session so Okay, I will work to get a copy of the recording and the um, slide out to everybody, hopefully by Monday. It may take a little bit of time because I know that at the uh, Michelle and her bunch will have to process the video and get it to me. So, and then we will send, I'll send it out by email. And as always, if anybody has any questions or things you want to run by or brainstorm or whatever, I'm always happy to help. So, and I have to give a shout out to my right and left hands, Toby and Annette, who are there in the library right now as we speak. Hello. So, yes, so we, we, we don't definitely roll with the punches and it's been an interesting year. So I think it really helps when you got good colleagues. So remember, we're all out there for each other. So if you need anything, holler. So appreciate you guys a bunch. Go forth and conquer the world, but hopefully have a good weekend before then. So you guys take care. We'll see you very, very soon.